Hi, this is the Science Chef. In this video, we'll be answering questions on the Chemistry Paper 3 by GCE Authentic Practicals for year 2019. At least to show you how to answer questions as you prepare for your 2023 GCE examinations. Alright, let's start. Question 1. In a titration experiment, 21.60 cm cube of aqueous H2SO4 was required to completely react with 25.0 cm cube of aqueous NaOH containing 2.00 grams of the alkali in 500 cm cube of solution. A. Write the balance equation for the reaction. B. Calculate the concentration of 1. Sodium hydroxide aqueous in moles per dm cube. 2. H2SO4 aqueous in moles per dm cube. And 3. H2SO4 aqueous in grams per dm cube. C. State three precautions that should be taken during the titration. You are given the relative atomic masses of hydrogen, oxygen, sodium, and sulfur, as usual. We have 17 marks here. Alright, now unlike your major examination where you perform life practicals, here you tested on your understanding of the theory of practicals, right? So you will not perform any life practical, there will be no life practical alternative to practical. So you'll be given sets of questions as if it were in a practical setting and you'll be asked to answer some questions based on some conditions, right? Like what we have here, this is a volumetric analysis question, which ordinarily you shouldn't have any problem with. So in the first question, we are given 21.60 cm cube of H2SO4, 25.0 cm cube of sodium hydroxide, 2 grams of the alkali in 500 cm cube. Of solution and we are asked to write the balance equation for the reaction. So the equation of reaction will be between H2SO4 aqueous in the solution plus sodium hydroxide aqueous to give us Na2SO4 aqueous plus water liquid that's a neutralization reaction but is it balanced no two atoms of sodium are on the right hand side how many do you have on the left hand side just one so we have to multiply this by two so we add two here so is that balance how many hydrogens we have here two plus two on the left that's for two hydrogen is not balanced. So what do we do? We also add two here. So it is now four. How many oxygens we have? Two plus four, that's six. Two here plus four here, that's six. So four one, so four one. So it's balanced. Alright. Let's move on to the next question. Next question we are told to calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide in moles per dm cube. Concentration. sodium hydroxide in moles per dm cube would be given as what are we given here we are given the mass dissolving 500 cm cube from that we are going to get the concentration of sodium hydroxide in grams per dm cube right and we know the elements present in sodium hydroxide, so we use that to calculate the molar mass. So this will be called to what concentration in grams per dm cube divided by molar mass. Of sodium hydroxide. But what's the concentration in grams per dm? How do we calculate that? But concentration in grams per dm cube we given as mass times one thousand over volume in cm cube. 
the amounts we are giving him is two grams and the volume is 500 cm cube. The volume we are using here is not the one used in the titration. It is not the 25 cm that was used in titration. It is the larger volume, the volume of water that was used to prepare the solution, which is what 500. So this will be what two grams times 1,000 all over 500. So that gives us four grams per dm cube. Now, whenever you're calculating concentration in grams per dm cube, your volumetric analysis. Be it concentration in grams per dm cube or concentration in moles per dm cube, please always put your answers in three significant figures. I keep telling you this, or I keep emphasizing this. Please always leave your answers in three significant figures, right? So next, calculate the molar mass. Molar mass of sodium hydroxide would be what? As AR of sodium plus AR of oxygen plus AR of hydrogen. Since they're all on one atom each. So that would be 23 plus 16 plus 1. That gives us 40. 0 grams per mole. Please always show how you get your molar mass, right? Therefore, concentration of sodium hydroxide in moles per dm cube will be equal to 4 over 40 to give us 0 0.100 mole per dm cube of course in 3 sf okay so that's question one then b2 says concentration of h2so4 in moles per dm cube concentration of h2so4 in moles per dm cube we may need to divide this here because of space okay bii concentration of h2so4 In moles per dm cube. Now let's see if we can calculate the concentration of H2SO4 in moles per dm cube based on the function provided. That is maybe using concentration in grams per dm cube and its molar mass. Is it possible? No, we are only given the volume of H2SO4. We don't know the amount or the mass of the H2SO4 that was dissolved in that volume, right? Or that is present in that volume. So there's no way we can get the concentration in grams per dm cube right so the only thing we can do here is to use the titration formula that's CAVA over CBVB is equal to N over NB since we now know the concentration of the base in moles per dm cube we know the volume of the base that was used in the titration which is 25 cm cube we know the volume of the acid that was used in the titration which is 21.60 cm cube and then we know the mole ratio from the balance equation of reaction okay so using C A B A over C B B B equals to N A over N B now from the equation of reaction what is N A number of moles of the acid is one because it's a basic acid and the base is two moles so equals to one over two okay please always replace the number of moles of the acid and base with the actual value of the mole ratio in the formula first before you do another thing. The next thing is we are looking for concentration of H2S so which is a CA. So CA makes it a subject of formula C is equal to CB VB times 1 all over VA times 2. Okay, next is to substitute. Please follow the steps. Our CB is 0 0.1. Our VB 25, that's the volume of prepared use, 25 cm cube, R plus 1. Our VA is 21.5, 21.60 20 times 2. Okay, so if we evaluate this, that gives us 0 
five, seven, nine moles per dm cube. Okay. Next question: You are asked to calculate the concentration of H2SO4 in grams per dm cube. That's B I I I. So B I I I. Concentration of H2SO4. In grams per dm cube equal to concentration in moles per dm cube times molar mass of H2SO4. Right? Remember, molar mass is in grams per mole, but then you multiply grams per mole by moles per dm cube, like this moles. Per dm cube times grams per mole. Right? This would go. So, living with what? Grams per dm cube. So, this is how to check that your formula is correct. Because most times students always mix it up. Instead of writing concentration in moles per dm cube times molar mass, we rather write concentration in moles per dm cube divided by molar mass as the concentration in grams per dm cube so always do this to check whether you're correct use your units to check right and also note that since you're working with dilute solutions your concentration in moles per dm cube will always be less than one will always be less than one mole per dm cube so that's another way to check whether you're on track or not right this is not a perfect my way of confirming whether you've committed an error or not, but at least it guides you. But a concentration in grams per dm cube most times is always greater than one, right? So, since we already know the value of concentration of H2SO4 in most per dm cube, what we need now is the molar mass of H2SO4. So, molar mass of H2SO4 will be equal to AR of hydrogen times 2 plus AR of sulfur plus AR of oxygen times 4. Okay, so that will give us 1 times 2 plus 1 times 32 plus 16 times 4. And if we evaluate this, we should be getting 98 grams per mole. Right? Therefore, concentration in grams per dm cube for H2SO4 will now be equal to 0.0579 times 98. And what would that give us? Remember, your answer must be in three significant figures 5.67 grams per dm cube. Next question says, state three precautions that should be taken during the titration. Of course, when you're titrating, what are the precautions that you must take, the basic precautions? One, that's C.
So these are some of the precautions you are expected to take, right? When carrying out a volumetric analysis, there are more than this, right? There's also the use of white styles to enable you know that when there's a change in color during the titration, that's when you get to the end point of the titration. So since acid-based titrations deals with colorless solutions, so you need something that will help you quickly identify or sharply identify the change in color at the end point. So there are many of them, but they need only three. They ask for three, so you can master any three of these or even four to be good for you. So those are the precautions. Rinse your bread with the solution that's the acid it will be used to measure. Rinse your pipette with the solution to be used to measure. That's rinse it them first before you start titrating. That will help in preventing the dilution, unnecessary dilution of the concentration of the solutions. Then take your readings at eye level. Make sure that the bullet or the pipette you are using, the meniscus is at your eye what, level. Then read your values from the lower meniscus. Do not spill any solution on the walls of the control. Let everything go straight into the what, conical flask. Then avoid air bubbles when measuring the volumes of your solutions. Then do not blow the last. We are always, students are always fond of doing that. That last drop of solution on the people want it to enter by all means leave it just wait be patient with it it will drop don't blow it there's a reason for that so ensure you remove the funnel from the bullets before you start titrating before you take your initial bullet readings because after taking your initial bullet reading and without removing the funnel by the time you start titrating a drop of the solution from the funnel can alter your what your values so you have to be very very careful so that brings us to the end of the first part of our tutorials on the 2023 YGC preparation. So if you have learned anything from this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to this channel if this is your first time here and turn on your notification bell to always stay updated with a new upload. So to you come your way next time, remember if you go outside, you can always see the sky. Peace.